Okay, so in this video we want to talk about the Phillips curve. And the Phillips curve gives the relationship between inflation and unemployment. And it was first sort of plotted in uh, the middle of the 20th century by a guy named uh, A.W. Phillips. And what he plotted was wage inflation on the vertical axis and the unemployment rate on the horizontal axis. Now, one thing to note about the way the, this book uh, does the Phillips curve is that they put the unemployment rate going from zero on the right to on the right to uh, you know higher number, 12% in this case on on the left. Um, so just keep that in mind that higher unemployment is to the left lower unemployment is to the right. And what he saw was that when inflation was high, unemployment was low, and when inflation was low, unemployment was high. And back in the 50s and 60s uh, in the United States and in a country like the United Kingdom, this looked like a pretty stable relationship. Uh, as we'll see, it really fell apart in the 1970s and 80s as central banks become more, became more active in managing uh, the economies. Another thing to note that in Philip's original curve in his data, uh, there were almost as many observations of zero or negative inflation, what we call deflation, as there were of positive inflation. Uh, and that is also no longer the case. So if we uh, think about why this might be, we want to think uh, about the labor market and the fact that when we are at equilibrium, where the wage curve crosses the profit curve, then both workers and firms are sort of getting what they expect. Um, workers are getting the real wage that they expect, and firms are getting the profits that they expect. But a lot of the times, as we noticed in chapter nine, we're not at equilibrium. And so what we're gonna see is that when unemployment is lower, we end up with a positive bargaining gap, which leads to inflation. And when unemployment is higher, we uh, have a negative bargaining gap, which leads to, uh, well, deflation in Phillips' time and lower inflation uh, in our time. So let's think about how this works. So here's our picture of the labor market, right? So we have our wage curve. Wages go up as the unemployment rate shrinks. Remember, this is employment on the horizontal axis, so unemployed is increasing as we move to the left. Um, and we have labor productivity and our profit curve. And so at point A, when we're at equilibrium, workers are getting the real wage they expect, meaning they can uh, buy what they want to buy with their wage, and firms are getting some amount of real profit, right? And that output per worker gets split between workers and firms. So when we're at equilibrium, there's no pressure on prices to change, right? Assuming there's no outside shocks or anything. We, we can stay sort of where we are. Um, but as we know, in the macro economy, there's always things changing. We're always moving along in the business cycle. We're always having shocks uh, because of uh, changes in natural resource prices or changes in weather or changes in something. Uh, and so let's see what happens to wages and prices when we move through uh, the business cycle. So here we are at equilibrium. When we have a boom, right, unemployment shrinks, and that means that we move up the uh, wage curve. And uh, workers are getting a higher real wage, uh, but what that means is that firms now are going to set higher prices because uh, assuming that competition is still the same in the product markets, when their costs go up, they want to increase prices in order to keep their profits the same. Uh, the way they explain this in the book is as if there are you know, two departments. There's a human resources department that is setting the wage by looking at the unemployment rate and how much effort uh, workers will provide for any given level of wage. And there's a marketing department that is setting prices based on costs. And so in this case, when the economy is booming, the HR department increases wages, which causes the marketing department to increase prices. Oh, but that means that the wages aren't high enough anymore, and so the 
uh, HR department increases wages again, and that means that the uh, marketing department will increase prices again. So we see that there's going to be positive inflation when we're over here and unemployment is really low. On the other hand, when we enter a recession, now all of a sudden uh, real wages can fall and that means that firms can either lower prices if they need to, uh, depending on the product uh, market competition, or inflation may just be very low. Um, but there's only one point here at equilibrium, at point A, where there's really no pressure on prices at all. So we can think of this uh, in terms of a bargaining gap, and we can create our Phillips curve based on that. Uh, if there is, for instance, a 1% bargaining gap so that uh, firms have to pay higher wages because of a lower, lower unemployment rate, that will lead to inflation. Now, they're just giving it a one-to-one -one relationship. That's not really important, I, I don't think. Um, but just know that when the unemployment rate is lower, workers have the upper hand, that increases wages, that firms then increase prices, that leads to inflation. On the other hand, if there's a recession, we could have a negative bargaining gap, in which case workers uh, cannot demand higher wages, and in fact, they see their, often see their real wages fall, uh, in which case we'll get deflation. And the equilibrium here is at zero. And that's basically what we saw in Phillips' original curve. As we'll see in uh, one of the next couple videos, we don't really see 0% inflation in most countries now, although Japan uh, has, is basically very similar to this, where they see, they've seen as many years of deflation as they have of inflation over the last 20 years. So what about aggregate demand? So how does this relate to our, our model of aggregate demand and the multiplier? Well, the way we can think of it is that uh, when there's a boom, when aggregate demand is high, that's when we get inflation. And when aggregate demand is low, when there's a recession, that's when we get deflation. And so we can walk through that in this slide and we'll see that these are just really two sides of the same coin, two different ways of looking at it. When aggregate demand is high, that means that we move up the wage curve, that means we move up the Phillips curve, we get higher inflation, lower unemployment. On the other hand, when aggregate demand is low, we move down the wage curve, we move down the Phillips curve, and uh, unemployment rate is higher and inflation is lower.